Welcome to Gene and Mike do the New York Times crossword. Hi, I'm Gene. And I'm Mike. And today we are doing the crossword for Thursday, October 17th, 2024. Did you do the crossword? I did do the crossword. And did you do it rather rapidly? I did do it rather rapidly. Oh, good. What about you? Um, I don't know. It took me about the same time as usual. Um, I had a couple of mistakes that I had to sort of work through. Mm -hmm. wasn't too bad, though. Uh-huh. I was surprised because, you know, it was a Thursday, which always has a little bit of a twist to it. That right. That usually eats up a little more time. But no, I solved it in about half the time it usually takes me. Hmm. So. There weren't any rebuses. No, there weren't. There weren't. I was, I was all ready for a rebus. Oh, and I'm sorry to disappoint. Yeah, well, that's all right. <laughs> I managed to somehow muddle through nonetheless. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Did you have any particular, I guess you didn't have any sticking points, really? No, not really. Um, I'm trying to think if there was any clue that just really stumped me, but I can't really think of any. So, nope. Mm. Mm hmm. Well, I had a little trouble with 42 across. Because it was shipmate of Cap Kirk, and it was Capt, not Captain Kirk, right. which should have been a clue. Yep. And I, I saw that the last four letters were Sulu, so I thought, of course, it's Mr. Sulu. Oh, no. Because that's how we always talk to him on the bridge, Mr. Sulu, you know? Mm. So, but it was Lieutenant Sulu. Lieutenant Sulu. L.T. Sulu. Mm -hmm. I guess one I did have a little trouble with was 38 down, tall and pointy as ears. And I, I had the like part, uh, so I said elf-like, and that wasn't right. So then I put in cat-like, and that wasn't right. It turned out to be bat-like. Yes. Like Batman. I guess. I guess, but yeah. So I I, I guess, yep, you could call pointy ears bat-like. I, I don't think I would choose that as a descriptor, but they are bat-like. Well, I was thinking along the lines of Mr. Spock, since we already had we already had Lieutenant Sulu in here, tall and pointy as ears. I was going for Vulcan esque, oh. <laughs> but I couldn't get that to quite work. No, no, not quite. <laughs> um, well, one serious problem that I had was with eleven across number one pal, and I thought, oh, it's dog because dog is a man's best friend, <laughs> but I forgot about women. Mm -hmm. And and so I um I but I kept dog in there for a very long time. I was oh. rather dogged about it. Oh. And eventually I realized I don't know what made me pull it out, but I just sort of gave up and and took it out and then I'm like, "Oh, I see all these downs. Now they work. Mm -hmm. Now they aren't being interrupted by D, O, and G respectively." Right. It was B F F for best friend forever. Right. Mhm. Mm we had 34 across. 1930s Vice President John Blank Garner. First of all, even knowing the name of the 1930s Vice President is going to be a stretch for anyone. That's true. And knowing their middle name, which was Nance. Nance. That's even more of a stretch. Yes. I've never heard that name I mean, I've heard like Nancy. Exactly. Uh, and sometimes, you know, people call Nancy, the well, nickname is Nance. Right. But uh, no, I'd never heard John Nance Gardner. And maybe when they're calling Nancy Nance, they're really just, just sort of saluting John Blank Garner. Could be. Could be. I don't even know who the president was when John Nance Garner was vice president. So. It was like Paul Earl Jones or something. No, <laughs> there's no such person. Oh, okay. <laughs> James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. That's what I was going for. That's what I was going uh -huh. for. So I've been trying to avoid mentioning the word theme because there was a theme here. There that, was a theme. That I had a lot of trouble really understanding why the revealer wrapped it all up. Oh, okay. So I await with interest your explanation okay well there were four themed clues the answers of which were common phrases but the uh the clues were very um kind of um convoluted questions that that made the answers kind of a punny answer 
um, and they all related to a um, difference of opinion between two people about a piece of writing. So the first one was uh, 17 across, much ado about some punctuation, and that was period drama. So, you know, having some some much ado, some drama mm -hmm. about a punctuation, which is, you know, like a period is sure. a punctuation, okay? So the next one was 24 across, anger over a grammatically incorrect sentence, and it was run on fumes, or run on fumes, as that's the common phrase, but like a run on sentence, uh, being angry or having a uh, a spat about have uh, an incorrect sentence, run on fumes. Sure. So, okay. Then 35 across, harsh words regarding the past and the present, and that was a tense exchange. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of obvious. And then finally, brawl over what to call a piece of writing, and that was title fight. So those were the themed clues. And then the revealer was punny summary of the battle between editor and writer seen in the themed clues, and that was altercation. Alter, because, you know, when you write, editing is altering, altercation. So there was like an altercation between two people who were trying to trying to uh, figure out the best way to, to write something. Okay. So I'm trying to, still trying to figure out how cation fits into this. Well, it's more the alter, just the fact that, that they, you know, it's an altercation because they're altering the words. Mm. Editing. I mean, you could say education. <laughs> that's not a word, but altercation is, and that's what they were doing, altering or wanting to alter the words or the title or the punctuation or the sentence structure. So they're altercation. Altercation. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay. Well, thank you for, for uh, explaining and enlightening. Well, that's that's what I got out of it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just sort of ignored it until I had everything filled in and then tried to understand what it was. Oh, but... uh -huh. mm -hmm. well, if it worked, that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there were other great clues here? There were. I enjoyed 40 Across. Commercial success, and that was ad sale. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that was funny. Oh. Um, we had one across, fed the kitty, perhaps. And I was thinking that had something to do with poker, surely. But oh, it was, yes, me too. I but, tried to put ante in there. Yep. But it was cat sat. Cat sat. Which is fun to say. It is, yes. Uh -huh. The one directly beneath it, I got completely wrong because I misread it as Hercules creator and, oh. went, <laughs> and went for Disney. Oh, no. Because that's the only Hercules I know. But it was... Hercule's creator, that would be Hercule as in Hercule Poirot, and it was Agatha as in Agatha Christie. That is correct, yes. I think this is like the second time recently where I had, yes, remember a couple of months ago we had a, a solution, the answer to which might have been uh, Doyle or Arthur, I think it was Arthur as in Arthur Conan Doyle. Conan. Conan Doyle. Mm -hmm. and, and Agatha as in Agatha Christie. And I went for Arthur. I think it's Conan Doyle, isn't it? Conan, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but it but it turned out to be Agatha, and it's Agatha again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great name for a Marvel series, which I believe is airing right now on Apple TV Plus. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I guess it would be on Disney Plus. And it's called Agatha. Um, it's. I think it's called. It's Ag. It's Agatha all along. That was the name of it. Oh. But in this case, it was Agatha all along, not uh -huh. Disney. Mm hmm. The next one, uh, 15 across, was kind of funny. One who might make a comeback. It was mm -hmm. alum yep. <laughs> coming back. That, that was brilliant. Uh-huh, yep. Was 19 across, it was no pro, and it was con. Yes. Is is there any Spanish happening in that clue, or no. is it just... Why doesn't it say not pro, con? I don't know. Okay, I was just wondering, <laughs> just sort of mildly curious... Because uh, that would have been easier. That would have been too easy than uh -huh. no pro? No pro. Maybe it's supposed to be a play on GoPro. 
Maybe, yes. I don't know. I seem all the humor in this seems to have been going right over my head. <laughs> this is from August Lee Kovach, so mm-hmm. I bet if I'm ever at a party not that that's likely to happen, but if I'm ever at a party with August Lee Kovach, I bet they'll be telling jokes galore and I'll be like, huh? <laughs> could you could you explain that one please? Yep. Mm-hmm. Thirty across. I don't know why I had trouble with this. Hunting cap feature was an ear lap. Oh, uh huh. I I don't know. Um, did you get that right away? Yes, I did. So an ear lap is what the flaps that come down. That's right. See, I wanted to go for ear flap. Is there such a? They also call them ear flaps. They call them ear laps. Ear laps. Uh-huh. Where'd the F go? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think someone should send out a search party to find it. <laughs> Let's see here. We had um oh twenty six across. We had, she served on the court with Antonine and Anthony, and that was Sandra. That is correct. As in Sandra Day O'Connor. That's right. And we just had Stevens. That's right. So I think Joel Fagliano has gotten a speeding ticket, and he's trying to list all these Supreme Court justices because that's how high he's going to take the case. They're all, they're all, you know, um, past, past tense. They've all retired. Oh. are no longer with us. So. Well, but he's still trying to sort of like pay homage to the to uh-huh. the judges. It would be it would look too suspicious if he started started mentioning like mm-hmm. Roberts and yeah, and I the suppose, like. I suppose you wouldn't want to uh, to do that. No. But I, th- I I still think he's trying to butter him up mm-hmm. for the big appeal. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was g- greatly uh, pleased to see thirty six down one side of a perpetual war in Orwell's nineteen eighty four, and I was pleased because I actually knew it. East Asia. East Asia. Oh, you knew it too? Yep. Oh, that's right. You're smart. Well, um, I did read 1984, and I saw the play. Yes, but mm-hmm. but many years ago, or well, maybe not that many years ago for East, for uh-huh. the play. The play we saw a few years back. But um, Oce- Oceania and East Asia. And Eurasia. Eurasia, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think that Smith was, he was in Oceania, yeah. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I remember it, but I just finished listening to a big chunk of the book. Oh, uh-huh. so that's Very good. that's where it came to me. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. We had um, toddlers need maybe was I, at, at one point I thought it was first of all I just had it it was it's three letters and I had the middle letter as a so I thought it was going to be dad although that seems suspicious. Yes, you know toddlers <laughs> really don't need their dads. And then I had AP. Oh, well, they do, but. It's kind of an odd answer. <laughs> uh, they need Most their, children they, need their mom. They need dads. their they need their mom. The, uh-huh. the dad would be nice, but is sort of oh. optional. <laughs> yeah. And but anyway, so so I had the A, and then I saw it's not dad. So I, then I got the P and decided it was lap. They needed a lap to sit in. Oh. but it turned out it was nap. Yes, <laughs> which makes more sense. Much yes. And I needed that because of forty three down green say was unripe. Yes. I probably wouldn't have gotten to there anytime soon without without some, some crosses to help. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's kind of an un, unusual word, unripe. Mm-hmm. I don't I've never really <laughs> used that in my oh the bananas are unripe. <laughs> Maybe say they're not ripe yet or they're still green. But but if you're but, in a hurry you could say unripe. I suppose but just think how much time you'll save. Unripe. Um, 37 down was, should have been really easy, stop right there, halt. And I couldn't believe it because I had the M of Mr. Sulu as the third letter. Oh. <laughs> so I had, so I had hamped and I thought, what's hamped? <laughs> and then I, I decided maybe it was wait, but then that broke tense exchange. So eventually I figured out it was halt and then it halt, was yes. the aforementioned yes. Lieutenant that Sulu. Was, I, I thought that was very obvious. Another one that was, was also, really... I, yeah. Really obvious was thirty eight across harbor sites boats. <laughs> oh well, you know, I'm thinking. Well, there's a pier, maybe a moor. You know, trying to think boats, of course. Sure, but 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 they're really you know for for thirty seven down stop right there. There's really only a couple of words at least that came to my mind: wait and halt. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know out there at the old harbor. It's like, well, maybe it's a reef, maybe it's a lighthouse, maybe it's a this, maybe it's a that. It was boats. It was boats. <laughs> Wharf would have worked. 
In fact, Worf, the, the third letter would have matched, so. That's true. But it was not not to be. Uh, okay, let's see. I also liked uh, 11 down, uh, which is a word you don't see too often, but flattering as clothing. Yes. Becoming. Yes. That's a that's a nice word. It is a nice word. Uh-huh. It's really hard but to get. I, to... I hardly ever use it. Oh, I never say, "Oh, that dress is so becoming." Really? To you or anything? I just say, "Oh, I love your dress." That's how I <laughs> greet. That's how I greet most of my my colleagues oh, in the morning. Really? My, <laughs> that jacket looks becoming on you. Uh huh. How becoming you look today? <laughs> of course. I had it starting, as you will recall, for a long time with a D. Yes. So that made it particularly challenging. A D coming. <laughs> well, I was like, you know, decorous. I was sort of, I was, because I had You're DEC. Thinking. Yeah. Decorous fitted, mm-hmm. and I wasn't entirely sure if it was a word mm-hmm. or just something out of my uh, overheated imagination. But anyways, it turned out it was, as you say, becoming. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the one right next to it was uh, an interesting fun fact. Uh, 12 down, first city in Europe with paved streets, 1339. Yes. They had paved streets in Florence, Mm -hmm. Italy. Everything's up to date in Florence. I guess. (laughs) And, of course, that ran into Nantes, so we had Nantes and Florence. That's right. Sort of sounded fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, 63 uh, across. Ending point of the first marathon was Athens. Yes. So that was, and then, and then the one next to it was also a little uh, unusual. Blank Nublar, fictional setting of Jurassic Park. Isla Nub- Nublar. Nub- have, Nublar. Have you ever seen Jurassic Park? I have not. I read the book, and it was so so scary. I thought I could never watch the movie. Right. I, I just oh, that was such a scary book. I think the book was. I I bet the book was scarier than the movie. It, was, I, it really was extraordinary. I I think it it probably was, but boy, I I almost didn't finish it because mm. I'm like, oh man, this is so scary. So. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think on that scary note, yep, we should wrap it up here. <laughs> well, Friday's coming, and that could be very scary. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you think it's going to be hard? I think it'll be very hard. All right. Well, we'll find <laughs> out tomorrow. And listeners, we will be back to report on our findings at that time. Bye bye.